Good morning, and welcome to Wu Xing Long Pai Qigong Tai Chi Chuan and Bai Wa Jack. I'm running a little test here. I have a new audio mic, a new mic transmitter and receiver, and I'm running a little test to see how well it works. Um, I'm getting, it looks like I'm getting a good signal, at least according to the, uh, the receiver. Um, and we'll see how this is working here. It looks like the mic uh, on the device uh, or on the YouTube uh, screen is working too. So I'm good. I'm going to uh, assume that we are in pretty good business and I will have to check it again later. Um, if any of you would like to respond, I'm going to put a little thing here. Um, I just say, how is audio with the new device? And if anybody would like to respond to that on a comment or something during a live chat, that'll help me get a picture of how it's working for you guys if you guys are getting the audio. Okay. Uh, there's at least one of you, looks like maybe two signed in at this point. Anyways, so uh, we're going to get started. And uh, hopefully this is working uh, just fine. All right, so we'll start feet roughly shoulder width and parallel. Get a good central equilibrium. Get that center line aligned and relaxed. Find where you want to be in the triangles of your feet. Rock forward into the ball of the feet, back into the heel, left and right, outside of the foot, inside of the foot. Getting that perfect spot that you're looking for in the center of the triangle of the foot some dynamics and then once we have that we're going to review that center line again check alignment between upper dantian and middle dantian make sure the head is where you want it to be make sure it's not forward or collapse down or up and back like a lot of times people will tend to look up and back too much scrunching up the neck so open up the back of the neck drop the chin down just a little bit and open up that spine excellent thank you lois all right, then, pardon the light over there. We have a, uh, a grow light on our living Christmas tree. So I know it's a little bright over there, but um, we've got a very small tree because we have a, a cat that's gonna try to tear apart a big tree. So we've got a small one and we needed to have a, a grow light on it because it doesn't get a lot of like ambient light. So pardon that and uh, gives a nice color though. So. As I was saying, open up the back of the neck, get that alignment between the upper and middle dantians, and then the middle and lower dantians. Make sure your body is where you want it, left to right, front to back. Make sure you're not leaning back by bending the knees and then stiffening the hips, but instead folding the hip, getting that sort of nice fold in the ball and socket chain of the hip to the knee, to the triangle of the feet. Pay attention to this, the muscles that surround the hip and you're balancing external and internal rotation so that the knee can stay in line with the toes. Relax the low back and drop the tailbone. Bring the hands in front of the lower dantian. Tongue lightly touches the roof of the mouth. We're going to begin with that just that sort of teasing gong breathing where we're just gentle drop in the perineum gathering into the lower dantian. Letting your body adjust. This is the time when you let things adjust and change as you realize your head, you can release tension.
hands down in front of that lower Don Chan. <clears throat> As we inhale, we're going to expand. Nice deep breath in. So your whole body is gathering inward. You're outreaching to receive. As you exhale and release, you sink back into the legs and release out. And then we're going to condense. So now as we inhale, we're gathering in, we're condensing and compressing into the Dantian. As you exhale, you release and expand out. Just loosening the body. Counter swing. And column swing.
then counter column swing. close. Shake it out for a second. So any good longevity practice of, you know, these kinds of Qigong and uh, Yu Jin Jing, which is like tendon changing practices, um, have to include a lot of different elements. One of the things that, that happens a lot of times when people practice these arts is they focus too much on one component uh, or when they're practicing body arts at all. You know, there are a lot of different elements that have to come together. There's the aspect of the chi, which is, you know, really vitalizing. But what happens sometimes is people oftentimes disconnect from their body in an effort to live in the imagination of their, of their working with the chi. And the imagination is an important part, but it has to, has to be really deeply connected to the body as well and all the different aspects of the body, including what they call a huang, which is the connective tissue, and the sinew, which is the sort of the fascia. So you'll see that a lot of the practices that, that I work with uh, and that I share are things that will engage with that fascia. And then as well as the muscle, like we'll do things that will actively activate muscle activity, uh, the flesh of the muscle as well. But an overemphasis on that can create a lot of stagnation and the hardness that creates uh, some, initially creates like a hardening stagnation in the body. And then as we age, that, that, uh, that Stagnation turns into what they call damp accumulation, and uh, the body easily gains body fat and all that. You have to accumulate. They just constantly overwork the muscle tissue just to maintain. Um, it's you know there's a reasonable amount of that that you do have to do for the muscle work um, to enliven the flesh and invigorate the blood. At the same time, an overdoing of that is not helpful because it takes you away from the free flow of the chi and it starts to deplete the huang or the connective tissue as well. Um, and, and so that all of these elements are important. And then the other thing that I see a lot of is that people overemphasize the softness. Now, softness is an incredibly important aspect of this, but and it's, the, it's the yin aspect and it must be present. You, know, you want to have that soft, fluid body, right? But it also has to be enlivened. The sinew has to be invigorated in that process also. So you can learn to be both hard and soft. This is part of what they talk about in Chen style. It's both, Taiji is both hard and soft, yin and yang, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. All of these elements should be incorporated. It's always about balance, the balance of a lot of different factors. So when you're practicing, don't just practice one way all the time. Explore the different ways you can express each of these particular practices, focusing on sometimes on things like activating or elongating or, uh, or strengthening or, um, or softening, right? Or getting it even, not even so much about soft, but more about the energy intent and that sense of flow from the leg all the way up through the hands. 
So here it tends to be softer, but it's really now about the chi flow as of, and about the chi more than it is about the sinew. But by adding a little bit of extension, now it becomes about elongating the sinew and activating the connective tissue. Right? Then I add in a little bit of hook and grasp, and it becomes about the muscle. And this particular set of practices, the, the, uh, the counter swing series, enables us to work with all elements. Right? It's one of the few practices I've encountered that does work with all elements of the, of the tendon changing work, which is all about longevity. So, and you'll see, you know, in most of my practice sessions, you'll see I usually spend a fair amount of time on this stuff. And the reason is because it's really valuable. So I want you to practice it in lots of ways. Okay. Now we're going to move on to our VG or our standing. Um, we've been doing Ling Kong Jing a lot. And today I want to re review the seven posture standing Qigong. Uh, uh, this is another really great one. You know, this one works with all elements as well to a degree. Uh, especially if you're learning to work with the intent the way I describe them in each particular posture. Because it's not just about holding the posture. There's a particular intention that you're embodying in each posture. So we're going to kind of go through them. And maybe we won't hold it quite as long as I have in the past because I want to yeah. move on to give you more things to work on. Because I'm only able to get online like once a week now, at least during the holiday season while I'm working. Elsewise, I want to give you... Uh, some things you can work on during the week a little bit more. So um, in this particular case, we're going to start off and uh, gathering the chi. So it's so always a good starting point. Opening and closing is very simple. Then I'm going to position my hands. I'm going to rotate so the fingertips are facing each other and the palms, is, the palms are facing down. I'm going to have the dragon palm, a dragon claw position where Again, middle finger and ring finger are working together with the thumb. Index finger and pinky are extended and working together. There's a little bit of a hook. If you look, you can see pinky and index finger are a little bit extended, but it's not going to be, I'm, I'm emphasizing it. I'm going to relax it just a little bit, and I want to hollow the Lao Gong point in the center of the palm. Okay, so here. And... I want to begin to pay attention to these right and left channels and the columns of sinew that surround the right and left channels from the feet all the way up each side of the body to the jiajang points. And then how the right and left channel of the arm comes down and envelops the chest, the shoulder, and the back, and how that all interconnects together around the actual right and left channels, which are inside. So we're kind of looking at the tendon and muscle channels that surround the right and left channels as I'm in this posture first. And I want to feel them. Take the time before you even move into the first position, which is the pillar of the sky position, to feel everything from the ground up that surrounds the right and left channels and how those two relate to the center, central channel or the tone line. I'm going to get a slight extension, pressing gently through the palms, and the fingers and through the feet. And that will elongate the central channel too, tailbone at the top of the by the way, point at the top of the head, extend away from each other. And then I'm going to reach out and just gently press outward, letting the shoulder swing in the circle that it can make or the semicircle that it can make. Now here, when I get up, I want to drop those shoulders down. I want to extend the shoulder blade downward so I can really connect the Lao Gong point to the Jia Jiang point and extend down into the feet. So I get a feeling like my hands supporting the sky are supported by the lower torso and the legs.
And I'm going to let my arms come out and down slowly. Again, we're not holding each one too long today, simply because I want to be able to share a lot of teaching so that you have things to work with during the week. So I come down fairly slowly. face each other again. Come up. Inhaling, palms towards the mid-eyebrow point, letting my awareness come in to the upper Dan Tian, and then down through the Tsong Mai, through the central channel, down through the three Dan Tians to the lower Dan Tian. And I get ready for position two. Now position two, my hands are going to be still dragon claw position. Now I'm making sort of a triangle and I'm extending. There's a sense of pressure, like I'm pushing out again. Now I'm going to counterbalance this press with the hands with expanding the Ming Men in the low back. This will help facilitate the center line becoming elongated. And I want to pay attention to the shoulders and release them. So there's a sense of space being created in the joints as I press out and up. I bring the hands up till this triangle is directly at mid-eyebrow height. I want to keep the elbows relaxed and down and a gentle pressure, almost like I'm gently pushing the elbow forward so that it opens up the back of the scapula. Meanwhile, I'm opening up the occiput in the back of the neck and extending intent from that upper down tian through the mid-eyebrow, along with the pressure of the hands. Balancing that with the Ming Men in the low back and the rootedness through the legs. I'm going to let the weight of the arm bring the elbow down and naturally pull the hands out and down at shoulder width. Again, fairly slow. And these in-between motions are equally important because they actually, if you keep your posture, your, po your hand position, really you're going to start to feel this connective tissue. This is going to work with the Huang aspect, that connective tissue aspect of the tendon changing practices. We go back to that very first position, palms in, back up to the mid-eyebrow point again, down to the lower down chin. And now, as though we're going to move into Wu Ji, we're going to reach out and hold the tree. So we reach out, always grounding as I reach out. Turning the palms inward. Notice elbows are below the wrist and shoulder. Right. Lao Gong points and the center of the chest make a triangle. And then I'm going to come in just a little bit closer. The fingertips point towards each other. And then as though there's a, a sphere here inside this, I'm going to rotate the palms over the top of the sphere and press down slightly until the fingertips are at the level of the top of the collarbone, the base of the throat. As I do this, I want to extend my elbows out and down, almost like I'm pulling the entire shoulder out and down. And then I'm going to press down with my intent down through the jiajang points and with the palms down the right and left channels. Meanwhile, 
I'm elongating that central chin. You have to balance out release with intention and extension. So I'm doing this extending through the shoulder and the, and the elbow, but I don't want to do it so hard that I'm tightening. I've got to learn to relax too and let the intention move the chi and open the sinew. And then we press down as a pressing through those right and left channels. Interim phase of gathering the chi again, sort of like a, just a demarcation of one technique to the next re-centralizing. And this time we're going to go into that hold the tree or Uji position in the exact same way we did before. Only this time we're not going to let the hands come up to the throat level. We're going to reach out and around again, rooting through the legs as though we're going to catch the weight of the universe. And then hold this position. This is about emptying the being. You want to become a hollow column here. Yeah, we bring the hands towards the middle Dantian. Down to the lower Dantian. Then rooting through the legs. Then almost as though we're doing Taiji beginning. We extend, we're going to open up the joints, extend and expand out as we lift up. All the way to the level of the chest, roll the hands up, bring the elbows back and in, and press down to the level of the solar plexus. Now we want the forearms parallel to the ground. We've still got dragon claw, but it's very, very subtle and soft now. And everything is pressing down, almost as though your whole body is holding something down. Again, at the level of the solar plexus. Again, we press down, this time pressing all the way down through the legs, through the feet. 
And now we're going to do that same gathering that we did when we gathered the chi to the chest. But now we're going to reach out, gather the chi to the lower dantian. Again, Lao Gong and lower dantian are making a triangle. Notice I'm not hunching yes. upright, but I'm also reaching out and around, not, not linear. It's a sense of around and opening up the Ming Men in the back. Meanwhile, the perineum is gently drawing up. We're gathering the cheek here. Then we're going to do a reverse breathing. We're going to draw in, pulling in, kind of condensing. And press down. Elongating the spine up as you press down. And now we move into that last position where our focus is on the Hui Yin, the Bai Hui, the bubbling well points of the feet, and the Lao Gong points of the hands. We're just trying to elongate everything. down, release, bring the hands in, and close. Bring that foot in. And close. So my preference is to hold each of those postures a little bit longer. But that can take some time, right? And I recommend, you know, if you feel like there's a particular posture that's a challenge to you and you have limited amount of time, then you can, it's okay to work on them individually. Um, you know, each posture has its own qigong and is its own qigong. So it's okay to just work on one. However, the combination of all of them is far more valuable, okay? All right, so... Now we go through just the loosening exercises. We're just activating it. So start with the hands, wrists, and fingers. And again, with all of these, it's never just the hands and wrists and fingers by themselves. It's always in conjunction with the whole body. And then the other way. And then elbows. And the other way. And then the shoulders. Just left. 
and reverse. Now, notice when I open and close the chest, I don't lift the shoulder blades to do it. I drop the shoulder blades to do it because I want to maximize opening the pectoralis, major and minor. Right? Keeping that elbow down, really opening this up. And shake it out. Then trunk twists from the center. And here I'm patting the body. But still, everything's being generated by this, this movement of the center, left and right. All right. Should have turned that off before I left, before I start. Sorry about that. Can't do it, it's not even there. Cutting the thigh my or the waist and the hips. Down the gallbladder channels, which are on the outside, adding down the outside of the gallbladder channels on the legs, and up the liver channel on the inside, of the legs. inside middle, and down the stomach channel, which is the front outside, and up the spleen channel, which is front inside, and down the bladder channel, which is the back of the legs, and up the kidney channel, which is the back inside. Review those. Gallbladder on the outside, liver on the middle inside, stomach channel front outside, spleen channel front inside, bladder channel down the back, kidney channel inside back. Let's do it again. Gallbladder channel down the outside, spleen channel, I mean liver channel on the inside middle, stomach channel front outside, spleen channel front inside, bladder channel down the back, Kidney channel down the back inside. Waist rotations, so it's circling the daimai. Working with the abdominal muscles as well. And then down to the bottom socket joints of the hips. So we widen our feet, gently press and pull that ball and socket joint open and rotate the ball and socket joint. Sorry, guys. Um, I um, And the other way. The other side, press and opening the ball and socket chain of the hip. Yeah. And then the other way. Actually, I got, I got one. So you got a hundred. And we're going to work both of them together in a circle. Way. And then alternating. Man, 
it is like Grand Central Station in here this morning. A lot of activity. <laughs> and shake it out. Shake out the legs. Shift into one leg. Ball of the foot touches the ground. Heel is up. Soft and buoyant in your support leg. And small circle. Brushing the grass. Again, the foot stays parallel to the ground and low. In reverse direction. Stabilizing leg is very important. The other way. If you're not doing this with one leg, you're doing it with both. Each leg is doing its own thing, but you're stabilizing here and extending from the stable point into the other leg while you also manage your center line. And then the other way. A little crowded in here. So I'm going to try to do this in one action. Bring the leg out and hold. And out to the side. Hold it under, cross, get your center line upright, and come down. This is about stretching through the sacrum and hips. So we want to stretch that in the low back. Come back up, bring the knee up, knee down, heel back. Knee back and hip forward. Come back out and around. Rotate open. Using the glutes to extend out, extend the tailbone down, push the knee out, and rotate the whole upper leg. This isn't about pulling with the upper arm. It's about utilizing the tissues here to open this. Shake it out. On the other side, ankle and hip. The other way. Foot and ankle. the grass. Remember, utilizing this leg as a base to extend and align. Then the other way. And behind. Keeping that heel down so that everything gets elongated and activated. And the other way. Out. out to the side, and I move back apparently, and back, oh, stay too close. Fold it behind, sit down, and stretching that hip and glute.
chest. Knee down, ankle back, and heel, knee back, and head forward. Back out and around. Same thing here. We're using this leg to stabilize to create this extension. the knees back, straighten the legs, lift the sacrum, fold the waist and elongate the spine. Take your time, find where your tension is at different places. You may find tension up here, you may find tension in the middle, you may find tension at the bottom, you may find tension in the back, whatever. You want to work with it where it is and elongate that place that's tight, not skip past it to get to the places that are looser. And if you have a cat, this will be when they take the opportunity to try to attack your hands. Like mine is doing. Ow! Stop it. And then once I get to the bottom, as long as I can, I'm going to bring the hands up. And I'm going to, by pressing the palms together and extending the elbows down, I'm going to carry this stretch all the way into the shoulders and help Use the upper body to help extend and elongate the lower body. And keeping everything elongated on the turn to one side. And then the other side. You'll notice I'm getting little weight shifts left and right to help open up the hips, low back. Deep quad. Really extending like the opposite quadratus lumborum by shifting over to the left and back to the right. Just little shifts to help me identify where I can let go more. And then two dragons circle the palm. And back to the center. Drop into a squat stance. Spine nice and long. Let hands down and inguinal stretch. Let the weight rest into the inguinal area. Stretching out those inguinal muscles and the groin. Or 
back and forth maybe. And back and back up, rolling the spine up from bottom to top. And then dragon spine. And shake it. <clears throat> All right. And we're going to go through our eight, our eight move mirror form. Eight moves to each side. I'm going to try just doing it straight like I would normally do it without reversing it. And see how that goes for people. I don't get too much of a response, so I'm trying different things and seeing what uh, what helps and what doesn't. <clears throat> so we start feet together, central equilibrium. Tongue lightly touches the roof of the mouth. Elongate the center line. Nice and relaxed, but active. Expand it. Sleeping dragon awakens to find the root. So we sink. Awareness comes up the yin channels of the legs to the dantian. Step out to shoulder width. Awareness then flips up to the middle dantian and out to the right and left channels. And down. Taiji beginning. Deflecting left. the mortar. Split left and open right. Cross the hands and look to the right. Step. Squeeze and press right. Push to the front. Two dragons seal the gate. Roll the pearl and hook with crane spill. single whip. Catch and pull down. And deflect, right? Press. Step around and turn on the heel. Immortal comes the more. This time I'm just Keep it in this position so you can see it from the side. How did you reverse? To 
reflecting right. I'm left. Roll back. And press. And mortar pounds the mortar left. Split right. the hands and look to the left. Squeeze and press left. Push to the front. Two dragons seal the gate. and pull down. Deflect left. Step around. Press. Turn on the heel. And immortal pounds the mortar left hand. All right, hopefully that was uh, helpful and a uh, nice review for most of you. And if you have any questions, you know, send me, send me a, uh, a message and uh, I will try to respond as quickly as I can. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, it seems like the audio was much better, uh, at least from some reports and by the meter I'm watching. So I think my, my new little mic system might be working well. So yay. Finally solved that. You guys have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and uh, I will see you again next Tuesday, same time or the same for the next, uh, next lesson. Uh, I would like to have been able to do Thursdays too, but the, you know, my uh, post office work and uh, during this season has required me to also be there on Thursday. They're really only giving me this day as a, a day off. So um, I will continue on these Tuesdays and uh, until the new year. And then I should be able to bring something back in. And uh, I've got some scheduling that's going to be shifting around after the new year. Some um, senior centers want to try to bring some things back in or do some Zoom classes and stuff. So I may have some scheduling shifts. I'll keep you guys all posted if I change anything here online. All right. Thank you guys very much. Shosha, and you guys have a wonderful day. Many blessings of radiant health and a peaceful, happy heart.